In the news this week, final countdown for political parties registration as Pauline Hanson's One Nation hand in their paperwork. A WAMA News exclusive. Also tonight, political bungle blamed for livestock vessels return to Fremantle Port. Millions of dollars in cash and property seized an alleged money laundering scheme during police raids. And later, Dr Andrew Miller's comment. This is The Evening News with Ivan Loon and Maliva Thorne. Good evening. The deadline for state political party registration is approaching with minor parties completing their applications. We can exclusively confirm that Pauline Hanson's One Nation has submitted their paperwork. While the ANF is confident they will reach 500 members before the deadline, Paige Reid begins our coverage. The state's political parties have begun registering for the fast approaching 2025 election. The minor parties remain a key focus in this upcoming election and we can exclusively confirm that One Nation's WA have handed in the registration papers to the WA Electoral Commission. The party's WA Rod Caddies confirmed the move this week. Well, that's the aim. I, I think over the next 14 months, I think it is now to the election, you know, leading over the next few months, really, I, it, I should say, where we'll be starting to contact members, getting out at different events and, and just trying to inform people uh, what it takes to be involved in an election and if there's anyone that would like to run as a candidate because a lot of the time people don't actually realise that they're eligible to run, they go, oh, I don't have a political science degree or something like that. So it's just about informing people and, and looking to get some good people on board that want to see change in Western Australia. On the other hand, the Australian Nursing Federation also confirmed that they are handing in their registration before the deadline. ANFWA Secretary Janet Ray says they plan to fight for the nurses' wages with their political push. Currently, there are seven parties already registered, with another five still announcing whether they will be in for the running. The WA Electoral Commission's registration deadline wraps up tomorrow. The next state election will be held in 2025. Paige Reid, WAMN News. The discussion of live animal exports continues with one of the vessels ordered to return to Fremantle Port this week. Questions have been raised over what will happen to the 17,000 sheep and cattle stuck on the MV Bahia, as authorities say there is no need to disembark the animals from the boat. Here is Peter Kennedy with his take on the matter. The plight of the live export of cattle and sheep in the ship that's just birthed at Fremantle is a great example of bung bungling bureaucracy, particularly at the federal government level. The Federal Department of Agriculture ordered the ship back to Perth uh, days out uh, in the Indian Ocean. Uh, it ordered the ship back to Perth, but what was its plan? What was going to happen to the 17,000 sheep and cattle once the ship arrived at Fremantle? It seems there's no plan. The Federal Department of Agriculture apparently didn't consult with the State Department of Agriculture uh, so that the uh, animals could be offloaded or w w what was going to happen re with regard to their welfare. The Federal Minister for Agriculture, Murray Watt, says it's not his decision, it's the decision of the department under the legislation. So he's done a Pontius Pilate, he's washed his hands. The, the State Department of Agriculture or the State Minister, um, well, hadn't been consulted. So uh, there was no plan there. A, a great example of bungling bureaucracy and also a warning to Western Australia, uh, to West Australians, uh, of uh, bureaucratic decisions made in Canberra without consultation with the state government, uh, uh, both of which happen to be of the same persuasion, by the way. Uh, you've got a federal Labor government not talking to a state Labor government. Uh, it wouldn't have made any difference if it, was, if it was the other side, but it's a lack of consultation between the federal and the state level. Uh, over the next few days, in the searing heat uh, on the West Coast, there'll be a lot of people hoping and praying that uh, the welfare of the animals does not result in, uh, in uh, deaths or whatever, a stress in those animals, and uh, they'll be hoping that that ship gets out of Fremantle and on its way as quickly as possible. But not a good example of cooperation at the state and the federal level. Peter Kennedy, WAMN News. Two men have been caught by police and more than $6 million worth of goods and cash allegedly connected to a major money laundering group who were seized. Detectives executed a search warrant at a City Beach property just after 8.20am on Australia Day, seizing $1.2 million in cash 
and seven high-end luxury items including cars, designer handbags and watches. During execution of a second warrant, another $200,000 worth of cash and approximately 300 bank cards were seized. Land valued at $2.4 million has been seized and frozen. Authorities allege that $1.2 million in cash and bank cards and the proceeds were used to buy luxury items. A 36-year-old man and a 55-year-old man have been charged with different offences. They will appear at the Perth Magistrates Court on the 6th of February this year. Four people have been charged with a total of 23 offences related to outlaw motorcycle gangs in the bush. In a jointly organised operation from the 22nd to the 26th of January, officers from the Gang Crime Squad, K9 Section and Geraldton Detectives executed several search warrants across the region in the suburbs of Weberton, Nabawa, Moresby and Utakara. Police revealed they attended the Coffin Cheaters Clubhouse this week, where it was alleged that a search of the property uncovered steroids, dried cannabis and over $18,000 in cash. During the operation, a 50-year-old man, two 44-year-old senior members of the Coffin Cheaters gang and a 39-year-old patched member were arrested and taken into custody. Other search warrants were carried out at homes in Nabawa and Moresby, where it was alleged that officers found ammunition, firearm parts, drugs and cannabis plants. One of the men faced court on Thursday, while the other man will appear in court next Thursday. The Liberals are calling the state government to do more to stop school children going without food. They are asking the Cook government to provide more funding to charities that give food to educational institutions, following statistics that indicates a rise in the amount of school children that are not eating as cost of living hits home. It is understood that there had been a rise in demand for the school breakfast program run by charities across the state. The program is currently being implemented at 524 schools compared to 501 schools in 2022, with some schools being in areas not previously affected. We are calling on the Cook Labor government to better support charities such as Food Bank to take the pressure off schools and teachers. It is in inexcusable in a state as wealthy as Western Australia where we're seeing this significant pressure put on teachers and schools to pay for school lunches. The Cook government's investment in fee-free TAFE training has led to a significant rise in enrolments among Western Australian students, with a record 29% increase in applications compared to last year. Healthcare and social assistance qualifications have attracted notable interest, with courses like the Certificate Free in Early Childhood Education and Care and the Certificate Free in Individual Support experiencing substantial growth. Last year, nearly 39,500 enrolments were recorded in fee-free TAFE courses, prompting the government to fund additional places to meet demand. The fee-free training agreement with the federal government has been extended until the end of 2026, alongside the Lower Fees Local Skills Initiative. Additionally, substantial investments have been made in TAFE infrastructure and equipment across Western Australia to enhance learning opportunities for students. And now here's Dr. Andrew Miller with his weekly medical and news commentary. Hi, uh, thanks for your time. Um, look, I've got a confession to make. I've come out of uh, January carrying a bit more weight than I would have liked to at this start of the year. And it causes me to reflect on how much of our health uh, issues are long term and how important it is to have the settings right for the long term. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a bit of fun and relaxing over your holidays, but we then do have to turn it around and make sure that in the time uh, between now and Christmas, we uh, get things a bit back on track as far as exercise, nutrition, sleep, uh, alcohol consumption, and all of those other habits, getting our blood pressure checked, making sure that our blood lipids are not getting too high. And it all sounds incredibly boring, but having watched my mum go into a nursing home this year, where she's being really well looked after. She's managed to uh, lose a bit of weight and keep her blood pressure under control. She's now moving much better. She's now sleeping much better. And uh, I think for myself, uh, I need to just make those small changes, those little adjustments, 
uh, not sitting down with quite as much chocolate and ice cream after dinner in front of the TV, perhaps sitting on the exercise bike instead and eating an apple. Sounds dull, but really it's about the quality of life that you're going to have later on. People say to me, yeah, but I want to enjoy myself. Well, in order to enjoy yourself, you need to be in good health. And it's those little things uh, that really help us to sleep better, work better, play better. And uh, I suppose just a bit of encouragement that the long-term changes that we make, boring though they may be, actually do really lead to a better quality of life in the long run. That's been shown many a time over in scientific studies. We don't need to spend a lot of money. We don't need uh, supplements if we have a varied, colourful diet. We just need to focus on the basics and encourage one another because it's not always easy. We do fall off the wagon in terms of our eating and drinking and exercise. And if we just remember that we're human, forgive ourselves for the occasional sin, don't aim for perfection and just be in it for the long haul because uh, living a healthy, happy, long-term life is what our families expect from us. Thanks for your time. That was Dr. Andrew Miller. Now, here's Austin with what's coming up on 6 News tonight. Thank you very much, guys. The top stories we're following on 6 News right now. The United States and the United Kingdom have launched more strikes against Houthi rebels in Yemen. The LNP has confirmed they will contest the two upcoming by-elections in safe Queensland seats coming up next month. And the Prime Minister honours late MP Peter Murphy ahead of the by-election in Dunkley. Those stories and the rest of today's headlines all on the hour every hour here on 6 News and you can watch live on our YouTube channel. For now though, guys, it's back to you. Thank you very much, Austin. And before we leave tonight, of course, uh, this weekend is Melly's birthday. Melly, happy birthday to you. What have you done this weekend? I spent the weekend relaxing with friends and family, which has been a nice change of pace. And that's our weekly news and current affairs. We have the latest news on our website, wamnnews.com.au. Remember to subscribe to the WAMN Extra News Club so we can continue our work in the community. At the same time, you can also read Melly's uh, birthday opinion on there. For details on wamnnews.com.au forward slash news forward slash extra. From Melly and myself, wish you good health. Good night. See you next Sunday. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.